was up to, that I'm part of a military think tank, and I'm here to learn whatever I can. And they helped me immensely. Were I they got surprised? Yeah, they were surprised and happy. After visiting 150 Californians, Jim returned from his journey in 1979, and he wrote a confidential paper designed for the military's eyes only. In Jim's 1st Earth Battalion, soldiers would carry baby lambs into hostile countries. They'd greet the enemy with sparkly eyes and an automatic hug. The new battlefield uniform would include a loudspeaker that would automatically emit indigenous music and words of peace. If this wasn't enough to pacify the enemy, the loudspeakers would be switched to broadcast discordant sounds like acid rock music out of sync to bombard and confuse the enemy. Soldiers would learn to fast on juice for a week and eat only nuts and grains for a month. They would fall in love with everyone, sense plant auras, obtain the power to pass through objects stop their own hearts with no ill effects, have out-of-body experiences, have the ability to massage and cleanse the colon, stop using mindless cliches, stay out alone at night, and be able to hear and see other people's thoughts until they became super warriors, warrior monks. Do you actually believe that it is possible for somebody to reach such a high level of, of warrior monkdom that they could do things that ordinary people just could never do, like, for instance, become invisible or walk through walls or stuff like that? Well, people under, under extreme pressure have been known, pregnant women have been known to lift up automobiles when their child was under it. We could expect the same from a warrior. Now Jim had to sell his ideas to the army's top brass. He convened a make-or-break meeting at Fort Knox. And as I was flying toward the think tank meeting at Fort Knox, I went, you know, I can't just give these people a briefing about this. This isn't just information. So rather than tell these guys I'm going to give you a briefing about it, I said, I'm going to initiate you into the 1st Earth Battalion. I said, to begin the ceremony this evening, gentlemen, we're going to do a mantra. Take a deep breath, and as you let it out, sound yee. At this point, they laughed. Few people chuckled, a little bit embarrassed. And then I was able to say, excuse me, you've been given a set of instructions and I expect you to carry them out at high level. See, tapping right into the military mindset. Second time we did it, I mean, the place became unified. Jim took me to his garden. He said he'd perform for me the very same speech he performed for the commanders of the US military at Fort Knox back in 1979. Gentlemen, it's uh, a great honor to have you here in this place of sanctuary where we can mend our wounds and dream our dreams about better service. It's time that all the armies of the planet join together. So join me in this vision of being all we can be. Because this is the place where the 1st Earth Battalion began. And this is the place where you still, with the full permission of the United States Army, have the right to think the unthinkable, to dream the possible, and with your service, intention, and selfless nature, bring it about for others. The commanders were no longer laughing, Jim said. Like him, they'd been crushed by their experiences in Vietnam. It was as if the entire US Army was suffering from post-combat depression. 
So I was immediately appointed the commander of the 1st Earth Battalion. And is the 1st Earth Battalion still alive? It is. Jim published his 1st Earth Battalion manual and immediately throughout the army, soldiers began to try and implement his ideas. It was like uh, pulling the pin on a grenade and dropping it in the Pentagon. Really? It was that, it was that big? It was very powerful. I think it touched everybody that read it. Fresh strawberries. It rang true. It especially rang true with combat veterans, you know. It affected a lot of the command structure. And so a lot of people started thinking, how could we apply this, you know? In the, in the special ops areas of the intelligence units, you know, how could we apply this? People started thinking out of the box. Bert Stubblebine was certainly uh, influenced by it. He started uh, thinking a lot out of the box. But there was a misunderstanding. Jim realised rationally that sensing plant auras and melting the hearts of the enemy with baby lambs were good ideas on paper, but weren't necessarily achievable skills in real life. In this case, we're really not trying to perform miracles. We're trying to take ordinary people that are in unfortunate and extremely dangerous situations and simply bring them to a level of competence. So we're aiming at a higher objective in order to get to a reasonable state of, you know, potential for the soldier. But Jim's superiors were literal-minded men, hence General Stubblebine's many determined efforts to walk through his wall. You're reaching deep inside you Go! for things you've never known. It's been tough. All over the U.S. Army in the 1980s, Jim's ideas were flourishing. In fact, their famous Be All You Can Be recruitment ads were inspired by Jim's manual. Hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. You can do it in the Army. In the early 1980s, the Army offered Jim the opportunity to command a real First Earth Battalion, but he turned them down. He wanted his ideas to float out there. The 1st Earth Battalion would exist wherever someone became inspired to implement his ideas, however they chose, which is how they started staring at goats at Fort Bragg. It turned out that Goat Lab wasn't set up just so 1st Earth Battalion fans could stare at the animals. It was part of the more conventional special ops medical training. They'd break the goat's legs using actual force and then nurse them back to health. But once the goats were on base, the Jedi warriors took the initiative to stare at them. Did this explain how Michael Achanis had managed to kill one in this fashion? Was the goat already in a shaky medical condition? I decided to track down Michael Achanis. It may be surprising to learn that the man initiating this frenzied mock knife attack is a great fan of Jim Channon's peace-loving 1st Earth Battalion manual. His name is Pete Brusso, and he's a former colleague of Michael Achanis. He teaches martial arts to Marines here at Camp Pendleton in San Diego. The bad news is that Michael Achanis is dead. Pete said he'd tell me the strange story of how he'd come to die, but first he wanted to show me an invention of his. This invention is based on Jim Channon's study of chakra points and Eastern mind-body philosophy. It's being carried today by the 82nd Airborne in Iraq. It's called the Predator. It's friendly to the earth and all the other things we talk about, but it has a spirit to it. Uh, things we haven't taught you is you push knife, you can strike and push a person away. The pointed verses go in the people. Yeah. You take this point and push down, like that. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's just that quick. It began to dawn on me that Pete had a broad definition of Jim Channon's ideals. Just simply place this here, and they're down. You know, and it's just punish the bejesus out of them, you know? Get away from me. Want to grab him and shuck him forward? If you were to grab, you use the kinetic energy aspect of that to Jesus. remove him away. Is this really unpleasant for you? Oh, yes. Oh. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. 
That, yeah, it, it hurts like hell. And now this is amazing. This is truly amazing. I'm only going to use two fingers and watch where you go. Isn't that something? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. want to punch at me because you don't like no, it, right? No, no, and no, you just no. let's let you run into I this thing. I don't want to punch at you. What okay. I want to do is just leave. leave. So that <laughs> you can you can you can easily hook a finger. For Why example. are we doing this on me? Pete's predator was specifically designed to inflict carnage on chakra points, but even so, it didn't seem very First Earth Battalion to me. This okay, is, okay, okay, really, okay, well, okay, stop, let go. stop, let, let go. stop, let go. will you stop, please? <laughs> I was soon to have a major breakthrough regarding my investigation into Goat Lab, but first, Pete was going to hurt me even more. It's a great location, nice and quiet. Original front door, should open with a good kick. Don't worry about the alarm, it hasn't worked for years. No padlock. All our valuables are easy to find. Look, it's like a giant cat flap. <laughs> so what do you think? Interested? Don't advertise your house to burglars. Keep it safe. Keep it locked. Aquas LCD TV. True color is the key. More choice, more taste, more freshness. Subway sandwiches made just the way you like it on freshly baked bread with your favorite tasty vegetables and mouth-watering sauces. More hot fillings, like sweet onion chicken teriyaki or Italian meatball. You expect more, and you get more. Subway. Eat fresh. Believe me. Have you ever noticed how some companies seem to spend more effort chasing new customers than taking care of the ones they've already got? Well, from now on, BT with BT Together are offering UK weekend and evening calls for just five and a half P for a whole hour. Not just to attract the Johnny Come Lately's, it's also for their most important customers of all. Every single one of them. BT, more power to you. He had slick back hair. Everything about him was completely caricature. It looked like a lord. If you want to see a lord, you look at Lord Lucan. 30 years on, with previously unseen footage, Lord Lucan's son speaks out for the first time. The Hunt for Lord Lucan, Thursday at 9 on 4. Camp Pendleton, San Diego, and Pete Brusso was continuing to hurt me with this First Earth Battalion-inspired predator. Pete was truly a maestro of violence. All I need to do is rub his head with it. You can do this, take an eyeball out. If I want a little pain compliance, for, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be as easy as I can. A little pain compliance. You get a Later, Pete told me that you can grab an Iraqi insurgent with the predator, rip out his eyeballs, stab him in the neck, the blood would squirt out like a fountain all over his friends, and this would create a powerful, visual, psychic disincentive for the other insurgents to attack. It seemed to me that once the American army had recovered their strength after Vietnam, they saw that Jim Channon's ideas could be used to destroy people rather than heal them. Back inside, Pete told me how Michael Echanis had come to die. The common story that he was uh, killed in a helicopter crash in Nicaragua. Uh, that, that's not the story that I have heard. 
Um, uh, what have you heard? The, uh, Michael Chance was very much into key energy and projection and trying to bring that, that, that more esoteric aspect as opposed to gross motor skill, we're going to apply spirit behind things, mind, body, spirit type stuff. And uh, to, to prove his mind, body, spirit, he used to let jeeps run over him. And if you slowly go over the body, the body can pretty much take that. If you hit it with any kind of speed, you've got kinetic energy shock to it. Well, the person driving a Jeep didn't realize he was supposed to slow down too much. Oops. Yes, and he took internal injuries and died. Uh, oh. That's what I heard. Do you think that they then made up the helicopter story to kind of spare everybody's blushes? It could be. Either way, now that Achanis was dead, I was at a dead end regarding my investigation into Goat Lab. But then we had a breakthrough. My producer John Sargent went to Las Vegas to interview a First Earth Battalion fan called Colonel John Alexander, who is one of Al Gore's oldest friends. And the following conversation ensued. I wonder, have you heard of Michael Achanis, John? Hmm? Have you heard of Michael Achanis? We were told that in the 70s, he was the chief trainer of special forces, a martial arts guy. That's almost undoubtedly not true. Mm. We were told that in one corner of um, special forces, there was a training, uh, a complete expert in martial arts who was a training fellow who could stare at a goat and stop its heart. Yeah, you're talking about Guy Savelli. Actually, I was thinking of Michael Achanis. I think it's Guy Savelli. After much searching, we found Guy Savelli in Ohio. He confirmed the story and said, in fact, he's still practicing the technique. Only last week, he stopped the heart of his hamster just by staring at it. And you do, you do this to your hamster, or to hamsters? You, you do this yes. to hamsters? They died, died. I have to get it, I have the tape, I have the tape there. It goes around, and I can stop from going around. It's driving me nuts, and you can say, okay, I want to stop from going around. Well, then I'm going to make it kind of sicker, not feel the need to burrow under the, under the sawdust like that, yeah. And it just drops dead. Yeah, well, we'll take a look and see. It's dead. And I had a guy take care of it every night. Take care of it every night. What do you mean take care of it? Feed it, water mm. it. So, so you knew that it was a healthy hamster? Yes. And then every, you started staring, you started three, concentrating. Three, days, yeah. mm -hmm. three times. Guy's involvement in the US military began with a telephone call out of the blue from Fort Bragg. This was shortly after Jim Channon had published his First Earth Battalion manual. Special forces told Guy that they wanted him to teach the soldiers his particularly paranormal brand of martial arts. This is the tape from uh, uh, Fort Bragg. It's a demo tape with the guys, the, the special forces in uniform. He goes too, too slow, he gets clobbered in the hand. I learned with a machete. I'm going to tell you something. They did this one right after the other. It wasn't like, okay, let's take a 10 minute break now. We did it, one, that alone is paranormal. Break them with their head, break them with their hands, break them with their feet, bang, 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 bang. Hippie here, okay, let's get done, let's get done as fast as we can. This is the, the who does that? The man in the red trousers in this video is Guy Savelli. You've seen the shield to mental concentration. I mean, you see the three of us standing here. We're all in good shape and not hurt. Special Forces were so impressed with Guy's techniques, they wanted him to go further to teach them what's known as remote influencing. Oh, that's what they're like. <laughs> and I taught them how to make a person forget what they're going to say. Really? I can teach, oh yeah, you can do that. You can make a person figure what they're going to say easily. And I said, this is what you do. And all you really say is in your head, basically, you say, no, you aren't going to, you know, did you ever play pool, billiards or anything? Did you, ever, did, you ever, did, you ever get a, did you ever get a person when you, when you missed a shot and they were going to, you wanted them to, you missed your shot and you're going like, Argh! 
and they're going to shoot now. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, and they miss their shot. Uh -huh. That's the same thing. It's the same thing. Is it, is it like a tone of voice thing? Yes, but you're, but you're, but you're doing it in your head. So it's in your what head. Do you have to do? You just go like, no, don't do it, don't make that show, I'm going to lose. You know, you get that feeling inside of you that you blew it and you want them to, that you want them to do the same thing. Guy can't remember exactly how the conversation got around to goat staring, but he does recall at some point that night saying, let's give it a go. I said, can you get a goat, get an EEG machine, hitch the goat up, you guys stay with it, and I will try to knock the goat down and drop its heart rate. 